Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Okay, so Vectors Toy Auctions recently held a Star Wars specific auction uh, back in the sort of back end of April, so a few weeks back now. Now, this was probably one of the best Star Wars toy auctions they've ever done. Um, it was held over two days, they had so much stuff there. Pretty much every single figure from the original line, pretty much every vehicle, everything like that was up for grabs. So, I did order a couple of things. Um, so let's see what is in this enormous box. And this is what we got. We've got a B-Wing fighter, uh, completely unused condition, all parts sealed, and an AFA-85 Power of the Force Warwick figure. Now we'll get into what we paid into prices, commission, what vectors charge, or whether their service is worth it really, um, in a little bit later. But for now, let's just take a closer look at the two items. We'll start with Warwick. There's not a lot to say about this one really. Obviously it's a min on card graded figure. Uh, the grades were, let's have a look, they were 85, 85 and figure 90. Now this is actually the last Ewok I need. Um, I've now got a complete collection of all Ewoks sealed on card, which is quite nice. Uh, as is standard with the Power of the Force cards, they all have the same card back, uh, which is the 92 card back, showing you pretty much the full range. I say pretty much because there's only one 3PO and one uh, R2 on the back, and obviously there are a couple of variations of those through the line. And yeah, I, I always tend to go for um, unpunched cards. I don't know why, I just I just prefer that. Um, and I always tend to go for 85s. I mean, it's very hard these days to be able to afford anything um, off that line. But this one went for a f not too bad a price, I don't think. So my winning bid on him was £280. Now that doesn't include the commission, which was an additional 70 so he came in at 350 plus shipping uh, was around, it was £22 for the two items, so say £11 for this one. So 361 complete price paid, which I don't think is too bad. I haven't seen these go on eBay in a while. He's, he's quite a difficult figure to get in this condition. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think 360 is, is, is pretty good. I, I wouldn't go really much beyond that. Um, and yeah, I was happy to splurge. I mean, it was the last Ewok I needed to complete the collection. So yeah, fairly happy with the price. It is what it is. So if we move that out of the way, we've also got the main star for, for me um, is a B-Wing. Now I've never had this ship before. Been after one for years and finally managed to get one. Finally thought I'd pull the trigger um, because this one was, I say, um, sealed contents, has been opened. Um, which means I don't have to go through the heartbreak rank incision of opening up myself. Um, and yes, yeah, in obviously in, in mint condition. So it's also came in a flimsy sort of plastic case, uh, which obviously the original owner had. Now, interestingly, on the top here, they've actually got the price, if we spin it around, uh, for £325 on you, so presumably that's what the original owner either bought it for or was trying to sell it for, uh, for it was placed into auction. Now I'll go into the details or pricing a little bit later, uh, but for now let's, let's get this out of this case. So we can now see the box in a bit better light without that reflective casing on it. I think this is one of the best boxes, um, artwork wise. I, I've always sort of liked this one. This is actually the Kenner version, uh, so it is quite different to the Palatoy version of the artwork there on the front and I think this one's really nice it really does show off the model quite well so we'll just take a look at the top end of it um, so from here we can see how you're supposed to play with it it's uh, gravity controlled whatever that means <laughs> I think I'm just talking about the uh, spinning uh, cockpit there um, never seen this picture before um, you don't often see sort of box artwork close up in, in books and whatnot, and obviously it talks about the uh, landing gear. So, spin around on the side. So this is hanging sort of by a thread on one side. Technically it is still sealed on this side, although the tape has obviously dried up, but um, it's, it's sealed here, just about. 
we got the original price sticker. This was a Toys R Us in the US by the looks of it. $14.92. As I say, this is actually the US re release. It's the Kenner version rather than the Palin toy. Um, on the other side, it's the same picture again. Um, yeah, this, this side, the box is, is a bit more damaged. I'm not terribly concerned really about condition of boxes. At the end of the day, well, for me, when an item is open, it's it's the contents that, that are the important thing. Uh, sure, I mean, as I say, I mean, I just showed you that FA graded figure, so I think nice condition stuff has a place in the collection, certainly. But I think, for me, it's either right at the top end, whereas in the, the good grading is what makes it unique. Otherwise, it's just a regular thing, and then for me, it's just the product that makes it unique. So, for example, I, I would never get something graded that... That, I don't, that wouldn't achieve, you know, at least an 80 or an 85. I just don't see the point. But, you know, personal preference and all that. Uh, let's just take a quick look on the bottom, so just to make sure I've got all the sides. Ooh, let's spin it around. There we go, different pictures again. Just tells you how to activate the wings. Another little picture of the Rebels. And a picture from the film. Alright, let's get this open. So after sliding it out of the box, this is what you should get. Uh, this is the insert. You'll see the ship is quite snugly in in there. Sort of up, upside down, I think, at the moment. Um, but yeah, that's how it comes through. You also get, so this, as I say, this is completely unused, so you've got the sticker sheet and instructions. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. I, I should also point out that there should be a catalogue with this, and I was aware that that wasn't included in the auction, but I happen to have a spare one. It was the Jedi Collections Jabba the Hutt catalogue, so I can now say that the whole thing's complete. So this is what a completely unused one should look like. So let's just pop that in way and start to slide this out. Sorry, I'm doing this one-handed. There we go. Right, now, I'll tell you what, I'll pop that down for one second because there should be some other stuff in here. Here we go. Right. Okay, let's get rid of the cardboard. And let's bring the ship back into position. Okay, so this then essentially is, is what you're after. This is the main content. So you get the, the ship unassembled. You get a cockpit uh, cover, canopy cover. Again, sealed, still sealed in its bag. Uh, two guns. Now these were just loose, so presumably they were never bagged. And two wings. Again, sealed in bags. Now the guns obviously clip onto the wings, which clip onto here and underneath. Okay, so let's test out this spinning mechanism. There we go. We can spin the thing round, and the cockpit stays in position. I believe there's a metal rod that's in that cockpit, which is how that's achieved. Uh, now, there should also be, if we flip it around, let's see if this works. This should be the landing gear, so presumably that over here should pop out. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. Oh, in the, in the middle part as well. So, so far, so good. As I say, it's, it's unused, so you, you'd expect it all to be working. The interesting thing would be the electrics, because um, I'm not convinced that will be working. The auction did say the electrics were untested, which I don't know if that's code for, we know it doesn't work, um, but we don't want to say that. <laughs> but we'll, we'll take a look. Uh, so then, I believe one of these should then activate the, here we go. So you've got to push it in and spin it. Again, I'm doing this one-handed. Tell you what. There we go. Ah, I couldn't obviously do it because I had it 
There we go. So yes, we retract out. So obviously, if the wings were attached, that would look a lot more impressive than it does now. But uh, yeah, that function works okay. In terms of the general condition of it, it's obviously um, as good as you're going to get. Despite the fact, obviously, that it would have been sat in a box presumably for almost 40 years, there is still a little bit of discoloration um, in parts. I think most B wings that have actually been out and played with are, you know, obviously a, a lot yellower than this. Um, and you can see slight variations in colour in the plastic um, here and there. But I mean, beyond that, I think this is as good as a condition you're, you're ever going to find one in. I have to say, I am really tempted to put it together and open these bags up. Ah, mm. <laughs> I wouldn't put the stickers on it, but I am tempted to, uh, yeah. But then the trouble is, if I do that, then the uniqueness of it being an unused one is kind of gone. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll just have to buy another one. <laughs> buy another one loose or something. Ah, oh, us collectors, eh? We are mad, aren't we? Okay, let's have a look at the electronics. Now, I noticed, again, that there's actually a slight cracking where the uh, cover is. Apparently, that's very common. So hopefully, I'm going to be able to get this open without doing any further damage. Um, let me run off and grab some batteries, and we'll see if this thing works. So this is probably a good time actually to take a look at the instructions to make sure I put those batteries in correctly. So this is the pa uh, sorry Kenner version of the instructions. Again, very different to the Palitoy version. And you can see obviously the main difference is it has says Kenner, but also it's got the US address on the front there. Now this this instructions is really again it's yellowed with age, uh, particularly on the back there. Um, but it is mint condition. I mean, it is completely flat. There's not a single crease in it at all. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely uh, never been sort of looked through or anything. So let's let's be the first people to do that, shall we? Let's see if I can even open it. So yeah, in fact, we look at the difference in colour there from the outside to the inside. So this is obviously the colour it should have been. Um, but I mean, you've got to understand, I mean, say, I think this came out in 1984, so it's 39 years old now. So, you know, it's, it's stood the test of time, really and truly. So here's obviously the instructions for the assembling the stickers. Now, this is important. This is how you put the batteries in, and importantly, which way round they go. Now, I noticed some a difference, a bit of a variation on if the Kenner version versus the Palo toy, and it is around this battery compartment. So, if we look inside here, you'll notice that there's no indication of which way around those batteries should go. You would have to actually refer to the instructions. The Palo toy version actually has a plus and negative to tell you which way around. So, this actual piece here actually has sculpted differently. There is a sculpted plus and minus on there. So there you go. So, so if, in case you're wondering, say if you've got a loose B-Wing and you wonder whether it's the US version or the uh, British version, that should be able to tell you. Okay, so back to the instructions. We'll just quickly cover those off. So obviously how you attach the guns, how you attach the wings, yada yada yeah, all fairly straightforward. And then obviously the things we just ran through, how to open the landing gears, open the wings, and the gyroscopic cockpit. Okay, so moment of truth then. The batteries are in, they're in the correct way around. Let's uh, click this on and we will see it's been 40 years waiting for this sound to appear. Will it now appear? No, <laughs> is the answer. Oh well, that was a letdown, wasn't it? I think it was to be expected though. Um, Hopefully it's a quick fix. Hopefully it's just a case of unscrewing a few screws and winding the motor. So we'll we'll come back to that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to try and attempt to fix that now. Let's let's do a quick cut. Well, I wasn't expecting uh, to do this in my uh, unboxing or review video, but I have actually now since taken the whole thing apart, and I just thought I'd quickly show you the inner workings of it, just in case you have to do the same thing. Now, I'm hoping the motor, I can't see any corrosion, anything like that, so I'm hoping that it's just a case of 
Uh, it just needs a bit of coaxing. So if we spin it around a few times. The wiring looks all good, the soldering is all there. So hopefully, let's put it back together and whack a battery back in again. Fingers crossed, let's hope that works. In fact, I don't have to wait to put it back together again because I should just be, I left the batteries in. So if I press this here, let's see. Hey. 40 years we've been waiting for that god awful sound to be made. The speed wing has finally done it. All right, smash cut back to the, where we were before. So a special shout out to the toy channel Vintage Toy Rush on YouTube. He's done a complete restoration of the B-Wing, um, so I did watch his video quickly just to give me the confidence that I wasn't going to do any damage when I took it apart. And sure enough, oh, this is <laughs> that's pretty loud and proud. Uh, so as I say, I mean, I, I had to fix it because at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's obviously it was never it's never been used before, um, so I had to had to give it its purpose. Okay, right, let's just go into my final thoughts and ramblings. Um, so yeah, really, really pleased with this. Now, pricing. So, as I mentioned before, I got this from Fit, uh, Vector's Toy Auction. It was a funny old auction um, <clears throat> because they, they had a, a lot of lots and a lot of repeats of certain um, items. Uh, I think this was the only B-Wing that they had, admittedly, that was in this kind of condition. I paid at auction 240 for it, however, Vectis charged 25% commission, so that brought the total price up to £300. There was also then shipping. Shipping for this and the uh, Ewok figure was £22 altogether. Not cheap. So if, if you say you split that £11 an item, um, because I happen to have two items, so you could say that the, the final cost for everything including um, shipping was three hundred and eleven pounds for this, which I don't think is too bad. I mean, if if we look back on the price that the uh, original owner had on the box, he had it down at three two five. So I think I've pretty much paid the money, to be honest. Um, I don't think I've overpaid. Looking on prices on eBay, um, ones in this condition are going around for the sort of the three to three fifty mark. So yeah, I'm, overall I'm happy. Um, what I will say, just to give you a word of warning about Vectors, not, not to keep banging on about them, but they are increasing their already fairly um, sizable commission to 27%, I think, either in June or July. So just be wary of that. They do take a long time to ship things. This took three weeks and two days from completion of the second day of the auction. Um, it's not terrible, but it isn't great. I, I think we're, my issue with their posting times is that you pay such a high commission rate. What serve, you're paying for a premium service, but you're not getting a premium service. I cannot fault how they've packaged it. It was in that great big box. I, I didn't take any footage of unboxing it. I thought, who, who really needs to see that? But you can take my word for it. It was very, very well packaged. A nuclear bomb could have gone off and it would have been fine. So I can't fault from that point of view, but, uh, you know, over three weeks to, to send out an item, I mean, obviously money is collected immediately. They have your credit card details. So I just think they need to work on that. The other thing I think they need to work on, it was sent by DHL, but they didn't send any tracking reference. So it was just by sheer luck that I happened to be working from home that day that I was in to get the parcel. Um, so again, I, you know, they, they just need to improve that service a little bit. Um, and I say, when they, they go up to 27%, I mean, an extra couple of percent, it starts to rack up. I mean, the, these items, you know, they're selling in the hundreds. So, you know, the, the, it, every sort of couple of percent does does make a difference. Um, but hey, so anyway, let the buyer be warned. That's all I've got to say with Vectus. Okay, so hopefully um, you found that entertaining, or if, if you've got one yourself and you're trying to piece all the parts together, this, this is what it should look like. Uh, as I say, this is the Kenner version, not the Palatoy. Palatoy, the inserts are very different. And as I mentioned before, actually a bit of the sculpting on the actual model itself is different. Okay, I think we will leave it here and I will see you guys for the next one.